Why are you so confident he'll change his behavior, Mr. President? Yeah, I'm not confident he'll change his behavior. What the hell? What do you do all the time? So when did I say I was confident? You I said, said in the next six I months said, you'll be able to determine. What I said was, let's get it straight. I said what will change their behavior is that the rest of the world reacts to them and it diminishes their standing in the world. I'm not confident of anything. I'm just stating the fact. But given his past behavior has not changed, and in that press conference after sitting down with you for several hours, he denied any involvement in cyber attacks, he downplayed human rights abuses, he even refused to say Alexei Navalny's name. So how does that account to a constructive meeting as President, President Putin? Friday? You don't understand that. You're in your own business. No, he's not. That was a fan, two fantastic questions. Fantastic questions. And that's your angry answer. And what people have brought up, and I, I, you know, I'm not for what would happen with Donald Trump, but this is a perfect example. Donald Trump was in your face. All these people, every one of those questions was like Caitlin's Collins that she had to shout on the sidelines. And the president, for you know, he get angry sometimes. But for the most part, he took him. He would sit in that room with during the worst of the pandemic and let people ask four or five questions. Here's one shouted from the sidelines, and he walks back and calls her out. All right, you know, you got to be adults. If you ever covered sports, athletes are yelling at you all the time. They don't like to hear anything negative. You strike out with the bases loaded, you go up to the guy and you say, you know, what were you thinking? What, what kind of pitch you're looking for? Well, they just snap at you. You know, it, you just get used to it. I'm not used to Joe Biden acting like that because he's never in, very rarely in, unscripted situations. Remember some of the times he did blow up. Remember when he was, uh, he, uh, he was on a satellite interview and he said, uh, are you a junkie? When people were asking about his son, I guess. And there were so many times where, you know, if you don't, uh, you know, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. Obviously off the script and he showed some anger. He did apologize later, but listen, he did apologize. Here it is. I'll let you hear it. Cut nine. I owe my last question an apology. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have been such a wise guy with the last answer I gave. Anyway, thanks for being here. But then he was asked a couple of questions on the tarmac. Cut 10. And I guess the question that he was trying to get, and maybe you could take another stab at it, is what concrete evidence do you have from these three, or hour, three plus hours that, that suggests that any movement has been made? And I don't know. I don't. I don't mean no, that. No, to no, be a, no, not, no. I know, but you, you're all. Question, right? Look, to be a good reporter, you got to be negative. You got to have a negative view of life. Okay, it seems to me the way you all. You never ask a positive question. The thing that always amazed me about the questions, and I apologize for having been short on this before. If you were in my position, would you say, "Well, I don't think, man, anything's going to happen. It's going to be really rough. I think it's going to really be bad." You guarantee nothing happens. You guarantee nothing happens. Okay. So what you're trying to say is, I always notice one thing in life. When someone says they're an optimist before they give you a statement, it means what I'm saying is not rooted in fact. I'm an optimist. Before I go ahead and tell you what I think and what I hope for, I'm an optimist. So I will be detached from reality. I'm hoping for the best. So if Joe Biden was being totally candid, he said, after this meeting, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm hoping for the best. That would be an answer. Instead of, if you don't understand the answer to that question, you're in the wrong business. We all lose our tempers. But it's pretty amazing. This is why they keep Joe Biden so buttoned up. And Jeff Zeleny said that he's the one who asked that question famously to Barack Obama. What enchants you most about the business? Here's what he said about what he's seen so far with the 78 year old former senator and vice president turned president cut 18. What we've not seen him do is answer questions uh, like that without his aides screaming at him to stop. I have never seen a president covering the last four of them who is so protected by his aides in terms of uh, often not wanting him to answer some questions. Isn't that pretty amazing? I mean, that's Jeff Zeleny who wants him to do well. I mean, the... There's a lot of problems with this summit. Number one, you went in with having already give up the Nord Stream 2 uh, pipeline, allowing the Russians to make a ton of money, giving Western Europe, our allies, NATO allies, most of the members, the uh, free uh, discounted oil and gas, which gives them control over their energy. Unbelievable. Without a strong message, despite what Ian Bremmer said, who's as great as anybody I've talked to on the world stage, I thought it was a weak message with China. We could not get Germany to go along with strong verbiage because they're too concerned about their Volkswagens and BMWs, and they don't, they're not there to, do, uh, to, to protect themselves. That's what they were there for. And then when you go and sit down with Vladimir Putin and basically take his word for it that they didn't, not just saying agrees, they didn't hack our elections, 
They didn't hack our pipeline. They didn't have anything to do with hacking our meat industry. They said those were people maybe in their country, maybe not. They said we're the biggest offenders. And they got away with that on the stage. At the very least, there's some legitimate questions about the conduct of this summit and what was actually accomplished. I agree with Joe Biden on one thing. We will not know how effective this has been for weeks or even the next few months. But if they go into the Ukraine, if they continue to rattle the cages in Belarus, if uh, Vladimir, uh, uh, if Sergei, if uh, uh, Alexei Navalny dies, then you know they didn't hear anything. If we don't get our two guys back, you'll know it was a, it was a loss. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.